what is up everyone and welcome back to the channel welcome to another video where it's a beautiful late august sunday with about 36 or 37 degrees celsius on uh, the thermometer and uh, i am currently walking i am walking because uh, i have no vehicles no two-wheeled vehicles uh, at my apartment that's because i've been on a two-week holiday and uh, a holiday where I didn't go on two wheels. I went by car. I went to the Black Sea coast. Spent uh, about two weeks in the sun on the beach. Just relaxing. Just uh, unwinding. But now, tomorrow I have to get back to work. And uh, I have a couple of errands to run in the morning. So I need one of my vehicles. I left everything at my workplace. That means Donnie, Fred and Brutus. All three of them are, are at my workplace and uh, I've got a key so I'm gonna go pick one of them up. I'm probably gonna pick Donnie up and uh, get him back home because uh, I need transportation for tomorrow morning and I have a couple of errands to run that I'm gonna go into a bit more detail once I get to the showroom and I pick him up and we take him for a little ride because I haven't been riding in two weeks. I haven't been on the back of anything in two weeks and I'm eager to get back in the saddle. So, Let's head to the showroom. And just like that we've made it and through the magic of video editing that was probably like a 10 second montage for you guys. And the grueling one hour walk and uh, subway ride through the scorching heat for me but I'm gonna get the keys to the warehouse and get Donnie from inside there because uh, that's where I left him so hopefully he's still in there right well there's Fred but I don't want Fred I want Donnie where is he where did oh Bloody hell. There he is in the back. Oh well. I don't think I have to move too many around to get him out. But uh, yeah. I better start getting him out. Well, I managed to get him out. Finally in the sunlight after two weeks. I got my trusty Scorpion Exo 920 helmet out. Gonna put my GoPro, gonna put my gloves. But first of all, after two weeks... Do I need the jump box? 11.4 volts. That's kind of low, but let's see. Oh, started back up. Good. And I think we need some fuel. Yep, we're going to definitely be needing fuel. I'm going to gear up and uh, we're going to hit the road uh, and put some fuel in them and then ride them around a little bit. Man, oh man, back in the saddle after two weeks, almost two weeks, about 11 days, 12 days, something like that. Back in the saddle, oh, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. Then I get my gloves on. What's not so wonderful is the fact that I have to spend some money to get some fuel. Let's get my nav on. All right. Woohoo! Finally, some mobile air conditioning. <laughs> yep, heat is is way easier to handle when you're moving on a scoot than the, when you're just walking around. Let's get out of the yard and start heading home, but we are going to go the long way around because I haven't ridden in quite some time and I'm eager to ride them a little bit. We still got good air pressures in the tires. Nice and gentle on little Donnie. He's been dormant for two weeks and uh, got him get got to get him up to temperature. I did uh, let him idle for quite some time and uh, he's probably up to a decent temperature, but I also have to get my bearings back straight because, uh, yeah, I haven't ridden in about two weeks. Only driven and I'll get into more details because I didn't end up buying a car. I'm still uh, the proud, proud owner of three two-wheeled vehicles and uh, no car, no cage. 
So you might notice a bit of a difference on uh, this video. That's because uh, tomorrow and uh, you're probably not gonna see this video tomorrow today is a Sunday and this video is scheduled to go out on Wednesday and hopefully by then I will have all of the parts that I need because tomorrow I'm going to pick up I'm going to a computer store to pick up the last of uh, the hardware parts that I need to build myself a new editing rig for uh, all my videos now I haven't talked about this in any of my previous videos because uh, I didn't think it was interesting, but a lot of people have been asking what do I uh, use to get all my videos done and I will have a video uh, on the channel, probably the next video is going to be talking about all the gear that I use in terms of cameras, in terms of uh, microphones and everything and how do I get my shots and uh, this one may be a little bit different than the other ones because I've switched my Gro GoPro from uh, 4K 30 FPS in super view to wide angle 4K 60 FPS and the reason I haven't been filming in 60 FPS is because my home computer is about nine years old and uh, honestly it cannot handle 4K 60 it cannot handle uh, the videos that come out of the GoPro because I have been running, uh, let's see, a processor. It's an Intel 6600K that's overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz and that's about as max as it will go. I've pushed that thing as far as it will go. In terms of graphics card, a Radeon R9 390, which is Considering I use Adobe Premiere for my editing, the R9 390 is probably the worst video card you can get because it does absolutely nothing in Premiere. I mean, Premiere has no idea how to use that graphics card, how to leverage it. So it's basically doing nothing while I'm editing. And uh, about 16 gigs of RAM. Now, RAM is not a problem, but the fact that uh, my video card is doing absolutely nothing and uh, the fact that my processor is a 10 year old with single threads that means that it's a quad core that has just four threads it's probably the worst configuration to edit in adobe premiere but it has gotten me through three and a half years and it, ha it has seen me grow the channel from absolutely nothing to where it is now about twelve and a half thousand subscribers and almost four million views on the channel so it's done its job and while i was on holiday i have been saving up money for quite some time now and uh, while i was on holiday i was browsing the secondhand market and right there near Constanza in a city near Constanza where I was spending my holiday that's my birthplace it's where I was born so I went basically on holiday I went home for two weeks in that city close to that city I found an ad or a listing for uh, a couple of hardware components that absolutely blew me away the price was unbeatable so i paid about 600 euros for an ryzen 9 5900x that's a 12 core 24 thread cpu so i'm going from four threads to 24 threads uh, it sticks around 4 gigahertz all core in full load but I'm gonna tinker with that a little bit and see if I can get it a little bit uh, higher in that same money I also got a Strix X570e gaming motherboard which is a very high-end motherboard for uh, the Ryzen 5000 series also in that same money an rtx an nvidia rtx also by asus strix rtx 2080 which those who do editing in premiere know how good cuda acceleration is in adobe premiere so um, oh yeah plus 32 gigs of ram and the case and an actual nhd 15 cooler and a power supply a zalman power supply all of that for just 600 euros and honestly i could not pass uh, that offer up
All right, and just as a quick example, this is the point I'm trying to make. Uh, I've just loaded up the files for this video that you're currently watching on my old computer. It's my old 6600K with the R9. And when I hit play on 4K60, this is what I get. Choppiness, almost impossible to edit. And uh, if you can see, my CPU is absolutely pinned. Ignore this, it's actually running 4.5. And my GPU is doing absolutely nothing. And for those who say my overclock, my overclock is broken, we're just gonna go to task manager. And uh, performance, come on. My CPU is firmly at 4.49 gigahertz, all cores, and all cores are absolutely maxed out. This is as good as it gets. And uh, it's not impossible to edit. I mean, the sound is okay. But more... Okay-ish. But, uh, yeah, it's not impossible to edit with this, but... I have all the parts and uh, I'm gonna put the new computer together. And just like that on the new machine that's almost ready, here it is, I still have to put a different cooler on, uh, this is an old cooler master I had, I do have an NHD 15, 15 that has to go on it, I just need the mount for it. But uh, the new system is up and running. And uh, let's see the same video playback 4K 60 frames per second. I can just go anywhere on the video, click play. It just works. Go anywhere else. Smooth. Full resolution. No trickery, no nothing. And if we go to uh, our hardware monitor, we can see the CPU at just 23% utilization. Check out all 24 threads of it. And uh, the good part is now with the GPU, an NVIDIA GPU, for video playback, it actually works the GPU also. So I have my GPU at 23% and my CPU at 21%. This is an absolute game changer for me in the way I edit, in the way I'm going to make my videos. I can now actually start using different kinds of effects and try experimenting a little bit more since I have the ha hardware to back it up. I still have to copy everything to the new 20 terabyte hard drive, but it's coming along nicely. Now, back to the video. And why, what I'm still waiting from what I bought from a computer store, and I'm still waiting for it, so I'm gonna go tomorrow to try and pick them up, is a 20 terabyte hard drive, a Seagate hard drive, to basically be the bulk storage of all of my videos, because currently I have saved everything I filmed up to this point, it's, and it's almost about 9 terabytes. And uh, they are thrown all over the place. Uh, anywhere I can store it, I've put it, I've put them there. I've put the files there. They are all over the place on my computer, on my Google Drive, on uh, what else? On two external hard drives. It's all over the place. So I I did buy a 20 terabyte hard drive to be the bulk storage, and also an M.2 PCI 4.0 SSD, a one terabyte, to edit off of. Because currently I have been editing off of a mechanical hard drive. That workstation is currently not up, uh, up and running, so I cannot edit on it. But I, I want this video to be the first one I edit on it. So I'm filming everything in 4K, 60 frames per second and uh, just deal with it and edit it when I have my workstation done. That's kind of a motivation to get my workstation done. Oh, I can hardly, hardly wait. So that's a bit of an update on uh, the computer side of things because I haven't talked about anything about computers and just as a proving point, I mean, I'm paying for my hard drive and my SSD about 400 euros. I've bought everything else secondhand for about 600 euros so for about a thousand euros i am upgrading my workstation to something that i'm probably going to be using for the next four to five years at least 
because that should be plenty powerful enough to handle all of the video files that uh, come out of my cameras because I don't intend on going to 8k or something like that that's just too much 4k 60 frames per second is more than enough uh, quality and more than enough uh, resolution for the kinds of video I'm doing I'm not doing any cinematic work I'm not doing any TV work it's just this YouTube channel and uh, the fact that I can give you 4k 60 it's kind of awesome from now on it's fueling time it's fueling time what is that truck doing I need to pull into the fuel station thank you thank you thank you now you can place your bets on the fuel economy of this thing I'm gonna tell you right off the bat uh, about 3.2 or 3.3 currently with my current fuel level and distance covered uh, but we're gonna see very very quickly all right 95 it is so 4.9 liters going in that should mean a fuel consumption of what let's see quantity 4.9 and total price 35.53 that's romanian run not euros and sink needed come on sink 3.12 oh a little bit lower than uh, i was expecting anyway you know it's so good to be back in the saddle after all this time what are you doing I don't know what that guy was doing if he wanted to pull out or not but he went way too far to the right hand side so like I was saying it's so wonderful to be back in the saddle riding again after two weeks of just driving the car around and uh, not having any kind of motorcycle that's something I'm gonna have to fix in the future because uh, yeah Two weeks of being away from riding on two wheels is uh, a little bit too much. I, you know, like Keanu Reeves says. You know, when I don't ride a motorcycle, I go through withdrawal. It's not good for my health. You people that put your bikes away for the winter, I have no idea how you guys do that. I mean, two weeks of driving, uh, driving a car and I've had enough. I want to get back on two wheels. I want to get back riding. This is so much better. This is so much engaging than just driving a car around being in a, an air-conditioned cocoon. I'm having way much more fun and uh, believe me, it's warm outside. It's almost 40 degrees and I'm sweating in this helmet. I don't care. But anyway, I digress this video doesn't have a particular point anyway except me getting back uh, talking to you guys and uh, I've seen a lot of you asking and uh, I am gonna do a video like I said I'm gonna do a video on all of my gear because I am about to change the microphone in my helmet in my trip to, in my trip to Greece that you guys really enjoyed on the ADX I did have a couple of uh, very very bad audio issues I'm currently using a different lav mic it's not the one that I used in Greece but it's the lav mic that I use to film all of my static shots when I'm doing my reviews uh, so I'm kind of moving the lav mic back and, back and forth from inside the helmet to outside the helmet and stuff like that and I don't like it so uh, tomorrow not tomorrow then day after tomorrow I'm gonna go uh, buy a new lav mic and uh, I'm gonna also we're gonna also talk about I'm gonna take you guys with me shopping to a store that sells uh, video production gear around here and photo production gear and uh, we're gonna talk about and I'm gonna go through all of the different cameras and microphones that I use to make my videos because they're not particularly professionally made videos but you can get an idea of uh, how little you actually need to get into this kind of thing into just normal motor vlogging because I don't have expectation of cinematic views and yes I know I I blew that red light a little bit but I was turning right I wasn't crossing the intersection 
So yeah, I'm gonna take you guys with me shopping in the next video. We're gonna go uh, get a new microphone and I'm, also, I'm gonna go through the, my entire history of cameras that I've used and uh, believe me, you can buy secondhand just about all the gear that I have for less than 500 euros because I am not using any spectacularly expensive gear. This entire channel, like everything I do in terms of riding, in terms of buying scooters or motorcycles, in terms of traveling, everything is on a budget because it's a small channel. It doesn't make a lot of money. It makes a couple of two, three hundred euros a month now. Only now has it been started making a little bit of ad revenue uh, so that I can actually pay for my trips from the channel up to this point I've been paying out of my own pocket out of my own salary so uh, I kind of had to keep everything on a pretty tight budget because uh, yeah I also have a mortgage on my house I am paying that mortgage alone and, and uh, yeah it is what it is and now if you've made it to this part of the video you've made it this far into the video uh, you're probably asking yourself because if you made it this far you've probably watched a lot of my previous videos and you kind of know me a little bit uh, you're probably wondering why did I go on holiday by car and whose car did I take well as some of you may know from a previous video of mine a couple of about two and a bit years ago I have lo I did lose my significant other to cancer and uh, I kind of been going through it and I have been getting back on my feet in terms of uh, relationships and everything and uh, it wasn't easy but uh, like I've said in many videos uh, riding did help did help quite a lot to maintain my uh, mental health and uh, let me just guess past this guy there we go and now we have to yield here so like I've said riding has helped uh, with my mental health and my mental stability uh, during this period quite a lot and uh, for the past year I have been seeing somebody uh, I'm supposed to yield to you so for the past year I have been seeing somebody that uh, a couple of months ago did move in with me but she didn't move alone her name is Christina and you're probably at some point gonna see her on the video on one of the videos we're probably gonna do some kind of uh, stuff together a video together maybe because I have been taking her she loves riding she doesn't have a, a rider she doesn't have a motorcycle license just yet she is planning on getting one but uh, she has been riding a uh, pillion with me with covered I think somewhere in the region of four or five thousand kilometers together uh, both on Donnie and on the Brutus oh and also on my Zontes on Fred she lo absolutely loves Fred for her for it for his comfort out of all three of my machines she said that Fred is probably the most comfortable as a passenger uh, the GS Brutus comes close but Fred, Fred is a little bit more comfortable so yeah there's Christina on one side of the picture she's now my current girlfriend and we're living together we're just about the same age she's two years younger than me uh, but she she hasn't had a quiet life herself because she used to be married uh, she's no longer married, but uh, let's say she didn't move alone. She moved in with her four-year-old daughter. So, uh, yeah, if you get my drift and you understand where I'm going with this, I am now a stepdad. And uh, if it's shocking to you, believe me, it was shocking to me when I kind of got into this and I started liking this. And the little one's name, she's also a girl. The little one's name is Theodora, we call her Theo. And, uh, or Theo in Romanian, but I think in English people call Theo. And, uh, yeah, it's wonderful. I'm, I've never had kids, I don't have any kids of my own. 
Uh, I have no problem raising somebody else's kid. I don't care for that. I mean, it's not the child's fault that the parents didn't get along. And uh, if I've gotten this chance to make things right, then why not? Why not give that little girl the chance of uh, growing up in a stable, normal family with a mom and dad or a mom and stepdad? And uh, rest assured, I am completely up to my shenanigans when it comes to doing my part in raising her. So this holiday for two weeks by the sea was all three of us. Uh, I did take her swimming. We went out into the sea. I don't have any video footage of that, but yeah. Uh, considering I was raised in Constanza and I was raised by the seaside, I did a couple of, a lot of dumb shit with the sea, as in going on the, what are they called? The breaker walls or the swarm breakers. Those big dikes that go out into the sea that are made of stone. And uh, as a kid, I used to go on them and just jump into the sea uh, and then climb back up on them and jump again. And of course, I took a four and a half year old to do that because that's what you do as a responsible parent. Granted, we did go into shallowish water, but she jumped, she enjoyed it. She had fun, she learned to swim. And now she's gonna go back to swimming lessons, proper swimming lessons, and she's gonna go back to kindergarten because she's starting on Monday. And also, of course, I taught her how to ride. She's currently ridden her bicycle. She has a bicycle and uh, she doesn't need any, any kind of training wheels. She rides perfectly fine without training wheels. And uh, at Ryushnov, I didn't show you then, but they also, both of them came with me to Rushnov and uh, somebody there had uh, a couple of electric motorcycles and I got it to try out an electric motorcycle and uh, I have to say now I have to find a way to buy her an electric motorcycle because she absolutely adored it and she rode the wheels off of that thing and she picked it up instantly. I mean, an hour after she started riding, she started riding standing, she started doing uh, balance work, she was standing still balancing the bike with no feet on the ground. It's just amazing how quickly young children pick up stuff like this. So yeah, now I have to get her an electric motorcycle and uh, we're probably gonna start riding together. Of course, I took her riding with Donnie, like standing right here in front of me, of course, just around the parking lot because it's illegal to take her on the street. Uh, all you keyboard warriors, calm down. I didn't take her on public roads, just in a closed parking lot to have, so the kid can have a little bit of fun. And uh, she did have a lot of fun and she... She's definitely gonna be a rider. I think she's probably gonna be a motorcycle rider and uh, yeah How how could I contain myself from passing on my passion to the next generation? You just can't So yeah, now I have to Work my schedule around being an employee at sim Romania a part-time youtuber and now uh, a stepdad <laughs> I am learning a lot and I have learned in the past year I have learned a lot about life and about interaction and about family it's eye-opening what a little child can do even if it's not yours if you just start spending time and if you get into that the role of uh, parenthood of parenting it's like I've said I've never had kids of my own and I've never understood uh, like what it means to have a child and to have that responsibility of growing a child of uh, helping a child grow up and uh, it's it's special it's hard to explain and I'm not gonna try to be philosophical about it because I'm still figuring it out myself but let's just say I'm thoroughly enjoying myself and uh, thoroughly happy with my family life now never thought I was gonna say it to this soon but yeah I'm a dad
and uh, now after picking up Donny, of course I have a couple of errands to run I have to go to the supermarket and buy some stuff and uh, yeah I kind of wiggled my way a little one hour ride with uh, Donny, taking the long way home I got uh, it was accepted at home by the missus uh, that I can do this. I'm only joking guys. Uh, she's pretty cool with this YouTube and full supportive of me and my riding so she's she encourages me to ride as much as possible and she tries to tag along uh, as often as she possibly can but it's kind of hard with a little one but in the future you might see like uh, dual vlogs triple vlogs i don't know in 10 years time who knows who knows what the future holds i'm not gonna promise anything now all i know now is that i'm prepping for the trip of a lifetime in uh, july in june of 2025 with the 2025 scooter cannonball i also have eichma in this november to go to where i'm gonna be uh, road tripping fred my zone test 350e we're gonna do an iron butt all the way from bucharest to milan that's about 1800 kilometers that's gonna be an interesting one to see how i fare after about 14 or 16 hours in the saddle google says it's gonna take me 18 hours to get there i think 18 hours but I'm gonna try to make it quicker. I should be able to make it quicker because most of the way is highway. So yeah, now I have to go get some uh, groceries from the supermarket, which is right next to my house, but taking the long way home, yeah, it's gonna take a while, but it's currently five o'clock. I'm supposed to be home by six, or I promise to be home by six. Uh, we'll see if we make it. And re-entering the city after taking the long way home, as I usually do when I have the urge to ride this beast of a machine but I still have about half an hour to spare to do a couple of uh, grocery shopping and make it home by six as I promised and yeah like I've said uh, if to answer the question whose car I have been driving around it's Christina's car now don't think it's anything special it's just a 2012 Opel Astro 1.6 16 valve 110 horsepower just your regular run-of-the-mill family hatchback European family hatchback it gets the job done it's decently economical for being a, a petrol powered car gasoline powered car it's not a diesel and uh, it's not a turbo it's not a hybrid it's not anything just a 1.6 naturally aspirated gas engine gasoline engine I like it it gets the job done it's not as special as my uh, Audi, my A4 Quattro was, but uh, that thing is uh, long and gone, and uh, I'm probably not gonna buy another money pit like that again. Probably, but I'm not promising anything. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I love this supermarket because uh, it has motorcycle-specific parking. You don't get to see that a lot in Romania. Probably now with uh, the new law of 125 cc's uh, being able to be ridden by regular car license holders, uh, we're gonna see more of that. And we're gonna see a flood of 125 cc scooters in Bucharest and in Romania. But uh, for now, uh, they're pretty rare. And uh, yeah, this place has and has had for years motorcycle specific parking right next to the handicap section because of course you put motorcycle riders right next to handicapped people it's only fitting anyway let's go inside all right so i got everything and just look at this as i was saying i was the only one parked here when i arrived and uh yeah probably most of these are couriers but uh, people are starting to get into scootering no, I do have my backpack on the back with a couple of things. Small household uh, stuff you need around the house. And of course, the phone rang while I was inside, adding to the shopping list. Better not lose my phone. Put it here in the quad lock. Now, this can go here. And as I always say, and I keep telling you guys, a scooter can do just about anything you want it to do, including do the shopping for a small family. Here we go. Off the stand. 
let's head home what's the time it's currently 10 past 6 so I am a little bit late than what I promised I would arrive but it's not my fault the shopping list started getting longer and longer as I was sitting in inside the supermarket but at least I got everything we need and uh, I can head home and relax now and unload this footage and do nothing with it for now because I do not have my workstation uh, set up and if you're worried about uh, the two water bars in the top case have no fear I'm only riding about a kilometer down the road and I have uh, ridden with two of those in the back there for the past half year and uh, not once has one fallen off now of course i do not ride like an idiot and i know all the potholes so i'm gonna reduce speed for all the potholes and uh, ride carefully until i get home anyway that's about it for this video i'm about to arrive home first ride after two weeks of abstinence it really does feel like you get into withdrawal after not riding for a couple of uh, days or a couple of weeks but you soon as soon as you get back on your little two-wheeled vehicle you instantly remember why you fell in love with it that's fun and i can't hardly wait for the week to start to get back to work it's gonna be a, probably a shit show after missing two weeks of work uh, i'm gonna be pretty much destroyed by the amount of work that i have to do but yeah we'll get it done in a couple of days i'm gonna get it done in a couple of days and also fix the audio on my videos get another lav mic but I, for that one i'm gonna take you guys with me on the next video anyway hope you guys enjoyed this little vlog this little sunday ride and running errands and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video until next time take care out there everyone and ride safe bye